think it would change things. And I suspect that Barbra Streisand played Port-au-Prince tomorrow night. Suddenly, vast amount of food and water and shelter would gather around her celebrity. Now, I'm being cynical, and I'm playing with issues of taste at a time when, just as in 1941, in Sullivan's travels, there would not have been a depiction of Sullivan as the victim of gang rape. So the New York Times has not yet reached the point. It may do in our time. We have to be ready for it, I think. It has not yet reached the point where it would print on the front page a picture of a vulture tearing out the intestines of a dead child. Not yet. That would thought to be in bad taste and it would, it would, it would affect the national breakfast. And of course it would raise the question, and this is a very important question, I think, for anyone interested in philosophy and film, what are you doing looking through a viewfinder if that's what you're seeing at the other end of the viewfinder? In other words, if you happened, because you got lost, to find yourselves in Auschwitz at the wrong moment in 1941, and you had a camera, would you be serving humanity most by taking a picture of it that you would smuggle home and say, look, this is what's happening here? Or should you, by any other kind of moral imperative, try to intervene in what you see in Auschwitz, though you know that almost certainly what is being done to somebody else there would be done to you if you raised a finger or a voice or a cry. That's the kind of question that I think in a world where documentary has become increasingly important, that's the kind of question that draws philosophy and film together increasingly because the people making films, the people selling films, have this question to ask. What do we know and how do we know it? Those are questions that have dogged philosophers ever since time began. And one of the most remarkable things about film, and this has been true from the beginning, is that nobody has been able to say definitively Look, this is what this medium does. If Jean-Luc Godard had some truth on his side in what he may have said, the Lumiere brothers would have been on his side. The Lumiere brothers were the sons of a professional photographer. They got interested in the race to find to capture moving film. They experimented and they made a crude machine called the cinematograph that served as both a projector and a camera and it worked. And in many parts of the world they are identified as the people who for the first time showed moving film to an audience gathered together. And I'll say a little bit more about the word audience later, but to an audience gathered together. As opposed to the invention that Edison had made, whereby he would look at it one person at a time through a viewing machine. They were absolutely uninterested in what they filmed. No filmmakers have been more removed from the process and the judgment of what has been filmed than the Lumiere brothers. They wanted pieces of film that demonstrated that their machine, their invention, worked. 
So they filmed very obvious things. They filmed workers coming out of their father's factory. <coughs> they filmed a family having a picnic. They filmed a locomotive coming into a railway station. If you're filming with students, you know this stuff. You know it inside out. And you know the extra part of the story. It may have been condensed a little bit in time, but as they started to show these bits of film as a demonstration, as a demonstration of engineering, really, and of how light could be controlled and served back, how the past could be served back. This is really the first time the past itself, or something that feels palpably like the real past, is served back to us. They were intruded upon in the congratulations that came to them by a man named Georges Méliès. Georges Méliès was a Parisian magician. And he looked at these fragments of film and the magician in him caught fire. He said, my God, I could expose the film twice. I could run the film backwards. I could do this, that, and the other. He was beginning running on the spot to invent special effects. And his head teemed with them, just as his life teemed with films. And he goes up to the Lumiere brothers, and he has his checkbook out. This is the story. And this is part of the film business, so it's going to be a story. <laughs> he goes up to the Lumiere brothers, and he says, right, how much? How much for the rights to use what you've done in my magic show on the stage. He was a stage performer, essentially. And they said, oh, Monsieur Meliès uh, patted him on the head. It's very nice of you to be so kind, but, but please um, put your checkbook away. Uh, this is an invention without a future. <laughs> well, of course, Meliès went away and stole what they would not sell to him, a practice that still operates in the cinema. Uh, <laughs> with material, with machines, with people, one thing and another. And what you have there is the immediate prediction in 115 years, say, it's about 115 years ago now. There will be a world of documentary. And there will be a world of not just fiction, but blazing, lyrical fantasy of things that are clearly not so and not true. And wonder of wonders, where will they live most closely together in a place that nobody knew would exist at the time? American television. Because in that half an hour that is still allotted to the network news. People used to cross themselves when you said network news. Now they cross the street. <laughs> but in network news, there will be this, probably not as graceful as that, probably not as color controlled as that, but it'll be moving, living, and dying film where Katie Couric or someone will say, you may like to look away when this is shown. You may wish you could look away when this is shown. Your looking away will not do a thing, of course. But where that is said, and where after 10 or 15 minutes of that, you will break for 30 second fantasy films in which the efficacy and the reliability of this bank or that motor car or that uh, version of Viagra is offered to you with actors as part of the dreamscape. The dreamscape which is getting harder and harder for them to maintain that this is a wonderful country 